Who is Frieza? He was the emperor of an empire that controlled most of Universe 7. He is callous, he is sadistic, and overall he is just evil. That is something that's made a certainty in Dragon Ball Z and brought back in a lighter version in the Resurrection of F arc in Dragon Ball Super. But in the anime's Tournament of Power, we are rarely shown this. We are more told this by the characters on the stands. And that is where they miss an opportunity with Frieza in the Dragon Ball Super anime. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing Chapter 34 of the Dragon Ball Super manga and explaining exactly how Toyotaro got Frieza right and what that may mean for the rest of the Tournament of Power going forward. Know your place, worm. Prepare yourself. Damn Saiyan. Both the anime and the manga have Frieza teaming up with Frost in some way, shape, or form, and then having Frieza ring Frost out in similarly disgraceful fashion. But that's really where the similarities end because the manga does this extremely better. Not only that, it wraps everything up in chapter 34. The anime drags this will they won't they plot for several episodes and the moment where Frieza needs Frost to believe that he's evil, he ends up attacking Gohan just to ensure Frost's trust. Then after he tries to figure out exactly what is the limit of Frost's transformations, he realizes that he is far stronger than Frost and blasts him off the arena. Now the biggest problem is leading up to this point, there are only a few instances where Frieza actually does anything sadistic. He tortures some of the members of other universes, uh, some of the weaker ones, and that's essentially it. But on numerous occasions, peanut gallery on the stands call him out on him being evil, him going to betray Universe 7, basically going off of Frieza's history, not really showing us the character's full potential on the arena. And I would be lying if I told you that I wasn't just rolling my eyes every single time that they said this up until the episode where Frieza attacks Gohan and then I was telling myself really did they just go this route are they really going to have Frieza attack the universe 7 members for no reason and then that anticlimactic finish with him bringing out Frost I was scratching my head thinking was this all really necessary well it wasn't and really after this we only see Frieza fighting maybe once or twice more facing Aniraza, helping Gohan take out Dispo, and then being completely raffle stomped by Topo, leading to the ending where he fights Jiren alongside of Goku, which was pretty satisfying in my opinion, but it left Frieza in this ambiguity. Is he a good guy or is he a bad guy? Well, the manga solves this, but how? By the best way possible, Frieza tells Frost, Universe 7's weakest characters, Tien, Krillin, Master Roshi. And Krillin's elimination was just so glorious because it didn't have that whole backdrop where we wanted Krillin to be stronger, where Krillin wanted himself to be stronger. No, it didn't have all that extra fluff from the anime. He is wrung out because he is weak. Tien tries to take out Frost, but his most powerful blast barely damages Frost, leading to his ring out as well. Frost and Frieza essentially make a pact that they're going to have Frost fight first and then Frieza fight after that. So Frost is going all out and once he can't take out Master Roshi because Goku is in the way, he goes ahead and starts taking out members of Universe 9 with one glorious blast that takes out a good a, a couple of them and leading the trio dead dangers and a couple of the other stronger ones on the field. But again, Frost is not wasting any time. He starts taking these guys out left and right up until he really can't take out anymore because he is exhausted he goes to Frieza telling him okay well you know what it's time for you to tag in teammate but Frieza ain't having none of that he tells them you cannot trust anyone and the fact that the treacherous Frost didn't see this coming is beyond me in the anime and the manga but it did show exactly how this could be a possibility in the manga a little bit more because when they were first initially meeting Frost acknowledges that Frieza is older than him that Frieza is an elder to him Frost is extremely young 
so it could make sense that Frost is going to be thinking of Frieza as a figure to look up to. Frieza doesn't need to lay a finger on Universe 7, he has Frost do it for him. He even just straight up and asks Frost if he's got a different transformation, just to see if he's an actual threat, if he can go golden, and Frost says no, something that the anime puts a whole episode too. And once Frost is eliminated, there's no I'm going to attack the arena from the stands. No, that's basically it. Frieza goes on his way and then it cuts back to Gohan who has been doing a fantastic job. Just some of the best fight scenes in terms of Gohan since Dragon Ball Z in my opinion. He's facing off against the trio the Dangerous which are some of my favorite characters in Dragon Ball Super and he realizes very early on that their gimmick or their trick is their teamwork and how in sync they are to each other which was something that even the anime showed really good and Gohan is having trouble with these guys but just like in the anime it makes somewhat more sense because he is just in his base form he's trying to reserve all his energy so that way he can fight some of the stronger characters later on but just when you think this fighting is going to go on into chapter 35 Frieza comes in and takes out two of the brothers and then rings out Bergamo as Piccolo has him cornered but he's having second thoughts about ringing him out because Bergamo was like, okay, don't ring me out because you don't want to be the one who is erasing an entire universe and having that blood on your hands. But Frieza's like, nah, you're out and kicks him right off, leading to Universe 9's erasure, which is exactly what happened in the anime. And then that is where the chapter ends off. Ultimately, this was a Frieza chapter and this set the tone spectacularly for the future of the tournament of power in the manga because now it is extremely believable that Frieza can switch and take out characters on his own team. It's his fault that both Krillin and Tien are gone and if he's got something to gain then he could do this again. And as much as I loved the fight at the end of the anime where you see Goku and Frieza facing off against Jiren, I would like to similarly see that in the chapters but there's always going to be this sadistic quality behind it that I know for sure now that Frieza cannot be trusted and the manga did this beautifully so I'm gonna go ahead and give this chapter a 7 out of 7 the torment of power has been fantastic in the manga and I cannot wait to see exactly what they're gonna do with the future of the tournament and beyond anyway guys thank you so much for watching let me know in the comment section below guys if you want to see Goku and Frieza facing off against Jiren at the end of the Tournament of Power in the manga. I'm going to go ahead and put that question up simultaneously to the airing of this video on my community tab if you want to go vote on it there as well. Drop me a like guys if you love chapter 34 and don't forget to subscribe for more Dragon Ball videos. This is going to be Dragon Ball Black signing off.